welcome to Tune of the Month and happy June, which also means happy anniversary to Tune of the Month. Yes, it was uh, quite a few Junes ago that I had this crazy idea. I know, I'll teach some tunes on the internet and wonder if anyone's watching. Well, you're there, so <laughs> apparently someone's watching. And uh, thank you for stopping by and making my crazy idea seem a lot less crazy than it did when I first had it. Uh, because I sure do love getting to share tunes with you guys. So, um, I always like to do something special for Tune of the Month anniversary. This month, I'm going to honor a request. I had a request come in um, to teach the classic Irish reel, The Fox Hunters. This is an awesome tune, total rocker. And uh, also, it's played all the time at sessions, and it's kind of in like the top 10 tunes most likely to be chosen as like the festival closer, you know, when all the artists get up on stage at the end to play together with no rehearsal, of course. No rehearsal and maximum rocking out. Um, Fox Hunters is very often selected for that. So you will have lots of cause to use this tune, whether you are a native Irish player or not. Plus it's just really fun to play. So let's do it. We're gonna do it in the key of G. This tune is also played in the key of A, but we're gonna do it here in G. for stopping by. We'll see you next month. And if you're here to learn it, you know the deal. Grab your instruments. Let's go. Okay. So I did say we're playing this in the key of G. That's an important thing to note because Fox Hunters is one of those that is played um, equally in two different keys, sometimes in G and sometimes in A. So learn it in G first here with me, or maybe you already know it with A uh, in A and you're coming here to do your G version. You're going to need both. Uh, more on this later. But uh, for now, set yourself in G major, one sharp, your sharps. And um, if you were listening to the form, which I hope you were, especially if you're a long time to the monther, you know we're all about keeping track of that form. Um, you notice that this is not a regular two A's, two B's kind of tune. This tune has five parts. No, don't be afraid. They're five very short parts. <laughs> and they're not hard to learn at all because there's a great deal of repetition in this, which means that the biggest challenge to Fox Hunters is keeping track of where you are. So let's get started. We're gonna really look at this form so that way you don't have to worry about losing track of where you are when you're actually playing it, okay? So here comes the A section. And I think of the A section as this mid-range rocker. You're gonna use your G major arpeggio. <laughs> your one chord. Everybody find that for a second, right? Um, if you're playing your fiddle, you know you love uh, my, I love my tricks of thinking about my hand in teams, odds team and evens team, my odd number fingers, my even number fingers. This is an odds team arpeggio. Three, one, three. And we're going to play it from the top like this. And that's already half the A section. <laughs> How nice, right? We would call that part one and part two together if you're using two in the month form lingo. So I'm gonna play this descending G arpeggio three times and then a little turnaround. Let's do it again. Yeah, find that little turnaround. Good. All right, now there are lots of ways to bow this, right? So many ways to bow it. I'll show you the way I like to bow it, which is using a lot of um, slurs that amount to three note slurs, uh, which is a nice Irish style, and then mixing up how you use them. So check out how I do it. I have my three arpeggios. I'm gonna slur, slur, down slur, extra now, I turn around. All right. 
right? So it's kind of got this neat little across the bar line, across the group feel to it. So I'm gonna slow down, down, now up, down, up, lift to one plus three. Yeah, we call that pattern a one plus one, two, three. It's a one plus three pattern. If you're not used to that lingo, you must be new to the tune of the month because we talk about that bowing pattern all the time. You can go back, check out past videos and learn all about it, or you can just pick it up here. Let's do it again, part one with that bowing. Ready? And down, scoop up, and scoop up, lift to one plus three. Good, one more time with the bowing, ready? And down, scoop up, scoop up, lift to one plus three. Good. Again, that's the first half of the A section. If you'd like a few more repetitions, just rewind the video. I'm not going anywhere, and I'll practice with you as much as you like. All right? So once you've got that half, we're going to do the second half. It starts out like the beginning. Then the ending. Aha! Okay, so let's go over that. This is the second half of the A section. We would call this the part one prime, where it comes back like the beginning. With a little variation. Check that out. So I have my down, scoop. Yeah! So notice right here. If you're a string player, you're going to find that's a perfect fifth across the string. So I rock my third finger across the string as a fiddler. You flute and accordion players, um, this isn't your problem. Uh, but string players, yeah, rock that fifth across the string. Let's try it again. Down, scoop. Good. And now we have the ending. Sounds like this. Now that's an important ending because it's going to come back in the B section. It's a little cloud ending. All right, so how I would break this down melodically, I have an evens team and then an odds team. Right, skip up, skip down. And then that's the same as the little turnaround at the end of the first half, right? Try that again. Evens team, odds team, a little turnaround. Now I'm sure you're looking at that bow and going, what is she doing? That's slick. Um, I didn't invent it. I stole it, of course, off of a recording, beautiful Irish recording. This is a mix of three note slurs, very Irish style. I'm doing three plus one and then one plus three. In past two of the months where we've seen this bowling, we've called it a palindrome bowing, right? It's a mirror image. Give it a try. One, two, three, plus one, one, two, three. Yeah, try it again with that bowing. Ready? Three plus one. One plus three. Yeah! Try it one more time. Good. Again, you might want to rewind, get real good at that ending, because you'll need it in the B section. We have the whole A, ladies and gentlemen. Let's put it together. Starts with that little descending G major arpeggio in the mid-range. Odds team, if you're a fiddler. Down, scoop, scoop. Little turnaround arpeggio. ladies and gentlemen you just did two of them it's very short isn't it we sometimes call this a single tune it's only four bars long it's not eight bars repeated only four bars repeated let's try two A's one more time so you can put that all together ready and also just kind of start cementing in your brain that the A section of Fox 100 is this descending G major arpeggio descending root arpeggio with the scoop up ready and down scoop and scoop up, lift, so turn around, 
Good. Down. Rock across. Ending. One, two, three. One, two, three. Repeat. Down. Scoop up. Scoop up. Down. Rock across. Ending. So if you want some more love on that A section, just hit rewind. Learn as many times as you like. I'm going on to the B section. Sounds like this. You also hear a lot of repetition. So already in your brain, start fusing those two sections together, A and B, because they're related by ending. <laughs> okay, now the other distinctive thing about this B section is it starts out with that nice and fat long note. That's a really distinctive part of the B. All right, so let's do it. That big fat long note is a nice fat D. Do just that much. That's the whole first half of the section. So I have my D. It's a dotted quarter, so I'll count one, two, three. Yeah, try that. Ready? And one, two, three. Yeah, so after this, I'll hop across. Right? Gotta refine that interval. the scale, doesn't it? Down the scale, skip back to your D. Now, you notice that I have a little grace note in there. Usually when we do things slowly, I take grace notes out and turn them up, but this one's in and it's because it's really important. Here, I'm going to slur. Right, I'm going to do a three note slur there. And there's actually a repeated note B. Now, Irish tunes have a lot of times repeated notes, and if you want to slur them, or even without slurring them, it's very common to separate them with a little grace note. We're using a little tap here. Um, I like the name the tap. I've also heard in Ireland it called the flick. It basically just takes any finger that's free and tap your string and come away. Check it out. Tap. Yeah, try it. Ready? And one, two, three, and tap. Is the bowing ready and one two three tap two three extra if you follow June the month you'll recognize that bowing I call it the hook three because it's a three note slur that hooks together glues together two eighth note groups one two three hook three one two three extra now G major arpeggio one two Notice it's the same little turnaround, and I'm using hook three bowing. One, two, three, slur, uh, uh, extra, yeah. The hook three is three separate, two, three, slur three going up bow, slur, uh, uh, you'll have two left over that are extra. Try that again. One, two, three, slur, uh, extra, and you got it. Put the two halves together, start on that big fat D, B section, and one, two, three, slur, extra, one, two, three, slur, extra, nice, do it again, one, two, three, slur, extra, one, two, three, slur, extra, that's the first half of the B section, you already know the second half. It's going to do that big fat D again. One, two, three, slur, extra. Now the clue, uh, the cloud ending that you already know. One, two, three, and. Yeah, do the second half. 
It starts with the B theme. One, two, three. Helps if I don't boggle it, doesn't it? Let's try it again. One, two, three. Together, ready? We'll do two to B's. Two, three, and one, two, three. Back to part one. Cloud ending. section. Very nice. So if you want some more bee love, go ahead and rewind it and um, do it a few more times. Okay. So let's actually, before we do the C section, let's play two A's and two B's together so you can feel these guys as a unit. A and B are a unit. The descending arpeggios and then the big fat D. And they're related by their ending. One, two, three, one, 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 two, three. Here we go from the A section. Ready? And scoop up, and scoop up, down, rock across, and a one, two, three, repeat, one, scoop up, scoop up, here comes the B section, ready, big cut, D, one, two, We're going up. All right, by the way, if that felt good, well done, the two A's, two B's. If it's the first time you're playing it, it might have felt a little questionable in places, just rewind and get some more mileage. Practice A and B together so it gets real strong. Okay, so now we've got the C section and the C section is where the skies open up and we ascend into the high regions of our G chord. Sounds like this. some of it. Listen again. You might hear some familiar patterns in there. So this G major arpeggio, if we include the top root, mm -hmm, now it's much, it's opened up, right? So and then there's one more little special thing. This is root, fifth, third, root, right? There's a little special. This happens a lot in uh, these major tunes uh, in the Celtic regions, not just Irish. We're gonna make it a G6 chord. Did you catch that little note that I added in? Rather than just going to the fifth, I add the sixth. Here's the root, the sixth, and fifth, third, root. And it gives it a really happy, warm, sparkly sound. Try that G6 arpeggio descending. Good, and notice string players that I'm slurring in that bottom note. Ready? It's G6. One, two, three, slur her. It's a little scoop. Do it again. Good, and now we're gonna go back up the G major arpeggio. And then for Contrast. Check that little high part. Now, remember what we said about repeated notes in Irish music? When you repeat that high A, put a little grace note in the middle. There 
you go. And now we have the first half of the C section. Ready? Do your G6 descending. One, two, three, two. Back up, G major. G major. Little high bit. You got it. Try it again. Ready? G6. Scoop up. G major. Little high bit. Nice. All right. That's the first half. Second half is going to start the same way with the G6. Here's a little ending. Up the scale. Back to A with a little tap. Ooh, yeah, that's a nice, easy ending, isn't it? Try that ending again. Up the scale. Now this is also kind of a cool ending because the C section is the only section that uses this ending. Let that sink in for a second. C section is its own thing by itself. Okay, you ready to put the whole C together? It uses our G6 arpeggio descending. Ready, and scoop up. G major, little high bit, G6. repetition on that go back and rewind do it again we're going on to the D section now we've been building in energy right we started out with a the chill descending G arpeggios the B section that big fat D now the C section goes up high G6 the D section is gonna go all the way up high and spend lots of time up on this high G sounds like this that high G. Let's try it. Now notice I did the same thing again. And when I have those repeated G's, I'm going to put a little grace note in between them. And that allows me to slur it. And when I land on that big long high G, you can just land on it really satisfactorily or you could roll it. Yes, nothing more Irish than a five note roll. Now we've done these lots in previous tunes of the month. You may know it from your past fiddle experience, but very quickly. If I'm decorating this G, I'm going to play the G. I'll play the note above, back to the G, note below, and then the G itself again. Note above, note below, note. But I do it quickly. So we don't hear da 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 da, we just hear and it sounds like it's rolling. That's where we get that name. All right, so let's try it. Yeah, pretty good. Okay, so I have this little fifth to the root. Do it again, fifth to the root. A little turn around, right? You can bow that so many different ways, ladies and gentlemen, but notice that my personal choice is that hook three again. One, two, three, slur, extra land. It's always a great sounding bowing if you want to smooth it through and have it a little bit sassy because it gives that up bow emphasis. All right, so that's the first half of the D. Let's do it again. Get up to that high G, decorate, roll. Here's the turn around. Good. That's it, do it one more time. Very 
Very good, all right. So the second half is gonna start the same way with that celebration high G. And a roll. Now here's the ending. It's very like the first ending that we did for the A and the B section. Only it goes up high. Evens team, odds team, cross the string. Try that again. The, uh, this is the second cloud ending, the cloud cloud. Yep, notice I'm using a hook three bowing. Do I do it a lot? Yes, I do. Does it sound good? Yes, it does. Try it with that hook three. One, two, three, slow. You got it. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a whole C section. Are you ready? Roll. sections four and five are related by ending just like a and b were d and e have the same cloud ending all right are you ready let's do it the e section is where we chill out that's the lowest energy of all the sections sounds like this notice that's your G major arpeggio that we started with only rather than doing it like descending we're doing it rocking across the string if you're a string player yeah so it's root third back to the root to the root, third to the root. Very common pattern happens in a lot of tunes. Do it again. And notice how I'm bowing it. I have that quarter note at the beginning. So I'm going to slur the next two. And now I'm back down bow on the strong beat. Nice standard way to bow that. And then I have a little turnaround. Now that's just kind of noodling around this root, so string players leave your third finger on the string glue finger, it'll make it easier. Right? I'm doing a little pattern that I call Frere Jaca. I don't call it, it is. Frere Jaca means go up the scale from your third finger, G, root. Frere Jaca, and skip back down to where you started. Frere Jaca, and then That's a little turnaround. It's a Frere Jaca turnaround. Frere Jaca. There you go. Let's put it together. The uh, rocking arpeggios. Good. Do it one more time. First half. Now you already know the second half. You do the rocking arpeggios again and the second cloud ending. You got it, do it again. Rocking arpeggios. Second and cloud ending. All 
Are you ready for the whole E section, the final part? Ready? And... gentlemen of the tune we now have the whole tune are you ready to put it all together we're gonna go two a's two b's that's a unit the c the high c is by itself and then the d the high arrival on the high g and the e go together as a unit high arrival and then chill out at the end are you ready here we go two three descending arpeggios down If you wanted to, if you're playing in a session or a festival, you'll actually at the end of the E section go back to the A and repeat the whole darn thing. We just played one time through the tune. Now with five parters that are single form like this, sometimes you just do it once because it's a lot of tune. Um, but if you're really rocking out, you may go twice, thrice, twice. That's a word now. Um, but yes, as you can see, the biggest thing about this tune is really keeping track of the form, right? So that's why I really think if I visualize these five sections, right? A and B are together related by that first ending. The C is by itself, its own ending up the scale. It's the only scalar passage of the whole darn tune. And then the D and E are related by the second ending. So you think A, B, C, D, E, right? And that's the ending forms. And then you remember the identity of each section, the scoop of the descending G arpeggios, the big fat D, the G6, the high G celebration, the energy is building, and then chill out with those rocking arpeggios. Build, 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 chill out. 
<laughs> so it's a really fun tune, so well constructed, um, and a great exercise in like keeping track of your form and thinking in terms of patterns and arpeggios, not just individual notes, which is really what we do here on Tune of the Month, but Fox Hunters could be like our mascot tune because it makes it so much easier than thinking note to note. So hopefully you find this fun, you love the tune, and um, you get to play it lots. Go back, rewind, play with any part of this video that you would like. And as per usual, if you would like to see sheet music for this or any future tunes of the month, if you are um, already a member of my email newsletter, you already have this in your inbox. Um, and if you are not a member yet, go to my website, www.mariblack.com and hit sign up for newsletter. And uh, once a month, you'll get an uh, email from me with um, lots of musical things, including the sheet music for tune of the month, my special uh, gift that I like to give to those of you who stay in touch regularly. Um, but hopefully you just learn it by ear. You don't even need those dots. If you look at the dots, then you have to memorize it. And that's a lot of work. So do it the easy way. <laughs> Rewind the video, play with me lots. I will look forward to seeing you next month for more tunes right here.